Hey, welcome to the show. I am really excited to talk about my experience this past weekend in Las Vegas at XRP Las Vegas 2024. I'm still kind of riding this like energy high from a couple of incredible days that I just want to kind of convey what that was like for me in case you weren't there or if you were there and you kind of hung out a little bit. Uh, so I first want to go back in time a little bit just to set the stage about why I was kind of blown away when I first walked into the, the event space, which I guess was like Friday morning. So um, not many of you know this, but some of you do. Like I've worked with Brad Kimes for a while now and a, a year and a half ago, uh, when he first launched his mastermind, I, I've been a business coach, so I was helping him kind of set up some of the training materials. If you're in his program, you've probably seen some of my videos. And at that time, the, there was no XRP Las Vegas. Um, and so we had many conversations over a period of a couple of months, I think, you know, talking about this idea for an event and, you know, what would it be like? And, and I remember it clearly, like we were brainstorming and I'll, you could even call it like fantasizing about what it would be like to have this incredible event. And, you know, Brad has, has, Brad has had a leadership role in the XRP community for many, many years. And, you know, he's has a lot of people who really appreciate the work that he's done. And it, he thought it would be great to kind of have these meetups where we, you know, you get together with people. And at that time, talking about something like Ripple sponsoring it or Brad Garlinghouse being at a dinner or David Schwartz being on stage or having like over 700 people in this like gorgeous, impressive hotel. That seemed like a pipe dream back then. I mean, and not that we were like cynical or, um, you know, nervous about anything. It was just more, none of that was real yet. So it all felt like our imagination and fantasizing. And if, if you've watched any of my videos, you, you know, in the last couple of months, you know that I'm a big believer in sort of the power of the mind and the power of the imagination and even how you manifest things into reality. And so at this time, a year and a half ago, we had a lot of these conversations about this. And he, um, you know, obviously there was an event a year ago that was amazing in itself. But, you know, there was a couple of things that, you know, hadn't quite manifested from that kind of original, almost like fantasy idea. And when I walked into that room this year, you know, now a year and a half after those first discussions, I was like, holy shit, Brad, like you manifested this incredible experience. Like this was what you wanted so clearly and passionately. And it felt like a big challenge, a big, I know I'm not trying to minimize any of the work that has gone into it, but to have remembered those conversations and then walked into this room and seen the, the crowd and felt the energy, I was just blown away. And I, if I ever had any doubts about manifestation, like they went away because this dream that Brad and Danielle had had, while it was amazing in year one, like this was just a mind blowing experience. And if you, if you're familiar with the idea of energy and vibrations, like we've all walked into a room and sort of felt the energy of it. You know, sometimes you walk into a room and it feels like unsettling or like what's going on here. And it's kind of disturbing, but to walk into this room and it, I mean, I don't know how high the ceilings were, but like, they felt like they were a hundred feet high, like huge room, huge ceilings to feel the love and the excitement in this room was just remarkable. Now, some people who have did not go and have criticized or questioned, you know, what were we really celebrating? They they seem to think that the the focus is on the like market price of XRP, which I you know I don't really think is that big of a deal. It's certainly not in the context of this event. What we were there celebrating was this powerful community of people who are really passionate about something getting together. And getting to like connect in person and have these conversations and talk to people who have inspired us and taught us and uh, you know led us to learn about new things that we hadn't maybe occurred to us to learn about at that time. It felt very celebratory because those of us who understand manifestation and you know as I just explained to you how this event was manifested, many of us share a similar belief that this new financial system built on assets where. You know, we're going to see a, the fall of the corrupt car cartel. Like we have already envisioned that world, 
We're just kind of waiting for the manifestation to appear. And if you doubt manifestation, just rewatch what I just said a minute ago about how Brad manifested this incredible event. So we were there celebrating this world we know is coming. We know it's coming imminently. And if you do know one of the rules of manifestation, when you are grateful for something before you can you know, touch it, that's actually a powerful way to bring it in. So Brad, this was such an incredible like case study in how powerful a vision is and beliefs and a commitment to doing something and, and taking obviously all the necessary steps to do it. But, you know, the fact that both David Schwartz and Brad Garlinghouse were active participants in this event was just so amazing considering that felt like a pipe dream and not too long ago. I also want to thank many of the people. I, mean, I met so many people this past couple of days. It was like a whirlwind. And what I want to thank everyone for, because this, you know, when I started making videos, it was really because I was looking for consulting clients, right? Like I, I've been a marketing strategist for a long time and had used Facebook and other social media platforms to sort of grow consulting stuff. That, to be perfectly honest, I'd gotten kicked off Facebook for posting a meme that they didn't like. And so I had to rebuild on Twitter. And I was nervous that if I rebuilt on Twitter and got kicked off, it would create another similar problem that the Facebook thing did. So I was basically creating YouTube videos was like a hedge against getting kicked off Twitter. And I was like, you know what? If I can connect with the right people, it'll open some new doors for some, some work. And it ultimately did. My sort of current life within Valhalla is a, a function of all of that. And what amazed me this past weekend was, you know, I've made a lot of videos at this point. And um, the the appreciation and the gratitude from so many people who have watched them moved me more than I can even express. It wasn't just a, a flippant thank you. I mean, it was this incredibly deep appreciation, not only for the fact that there's not a whole lot of women in this world, and I've kind of taken a you know, I, I don't really back down pretty easily with some difficult conversations or the fact that some people just appreciate my teaching style and have felt like they, you know, had a hard time understanding some of these concepts until I explained them. It wasn't just like I had one of these conversations this past couple of days. It was so many, like over and over. And I was just stunned and floored by just the kindness and the love and the appreciation that uh, I really wasn't expecting. And that was never really my intention. Uh, and I, it's hard for me to even kind of succinctly describe what that feeling was like. Now I'm an, an empath, which means I, I sort of feel energy before I sometimes process things like words. And I know that I met so many of you and I have no idea even really what we talked about or what your name is, because I was so blown away by this sort of loving energy that was just directed at me that I was like a deer in headlights for many of these conversations. So if you did meet me and we had a heartfelt conversation, I don't remember your name, please don't take it personally. It's because I was sort of enchanted and entranced by how deeply and profound um, the love and the gratitude was. So thank you very much for that. It really meant more than I can say. I didn't want to make this a whole crying video. So let's talk about some of the more fun things. Um, this event, it was you know, I've been to a lot of trade shows and conferences in my day, and sometimes like I can't get out of them fast enough. This actually felt like a two day, three night party where it was one thing after the other with people who are just celebratory and kind and having fun and just really wanting to connect with people who they've maybe chatted with online or, you know, seen videos. And I've certainly, you know, got to meet some people that I hadn't, uh, that I'd only met online and got to meet them in person. Um, you know, Mickle's a good example. You know, he, he, I was, he was on my show kind of a year ago, maybe at six months ago. We're super great guy. And the energy of him in person is just absolutely infectious. You know, Ray Fuentes is one of my favorite people in the world. And to see him again and his mom, they're just the sweetest, kindest people. You know, I love Zoom and I love that we can hang out and meet each other in person. And um, it doesn't ever replace I'm sorry, I love Zoom that we can meet face to face, but it doesn't replace what it is like to connect with other people in real life. And going back to this vibration idea that there is something very powerful about this XRP army. There is this passion and this enthusiasm 
and this commitment to like this level playing field and to a world where things are more fair and balanced and the opportunity for everyone to succeed, like all of that energy is really part of this community. And it's one thing to kind of sit at home by yourself and do your research and maybe even join some Twitter spaces or whatever. It is another thing altogether to be in a room with 700 people who share this passion and want to talk about it and want to tell their own story and their own journey and how they got into it. And the internet, as amazing as it is, and it facilitated all of this, obviously, if you have the opportunity to be in a in a space like this with people who share your interests, it is, it's a truly remarkable and amazing experience. I also have been very blessed to be a part of the XRP Unleashed production from Fruition Films. Uh, I was out in Los Angeles in February of this year and Lewis Jackson and I kind of filmed on the same day. And we had an amazing time filming and also being entertained by Chris and Maya Dodge, like the most gracious host and hostess ever. So if you are ever in a situation where they invite you to some kind of social event, go, because they're freaking fun. And I had a blast with them in LA and I was so excited when they told me they were going to you know, have some stuff here. However, the event opened up uh, and very quickly, I'm going to cry again, just letting you know, very quickly, the first thing was to show the kind of more full length trailer, like a kind of a 10 minute thing that they had made. And I, you know, I'm not used to being in these big rooms where I'm on TV, right? Like, I don't even know if that's really ever happened before. So I'm in this room, 700 people, it's dark, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, and this trailer starts. And the moment where, you know, I came onto the screen, like the room started to cheer. I have to tell you, like, to be in that situation, feel all of that love is is quite a remarkable experience, one that I will always remember. And many of you know my business partner, Jimmy, he wasn't able to go to this event. And the, the thing that I wish I could give him is for this the minute when he came on to the, the film as well, and the room erupted into cheers for him too. Like, I just know he would have really felt that very deeply. And so for all of you who are there and cheered, for every one of us, thank you very much. I don't know if I can explain in words what that is like to, to feel. Um, partly too, because I've been on stage before, I've introduced things and there's sort of the, almost the obligatory, you know, clapping when someone does that. And, and I've experienced that. When that film was airing and that cheering happened and we weren't on stage, that's a very different experience altogether. And one that I will absolutely remember for the rest of my life. So thank you to Bradford for that part. And thank you to the Dodges for including me in that film and, and that experience has been just so mind-blowing at this and it's not even out yet like I can't even imagine what it's going to be like when it's out for real so this was quite a moving weekend for me I met so many people I went to lots of parties had lots of wine oh and I do want to thank Todd Hancock for being my my babysitter on especially on Thursday night I know I had quite a bit of wine that evening and appreciate very much all of the the fun celebratory um stuff, including my chaperone. So thank you very much for that. Uh, this event is going to happen again next year. And while it's hard for me to imagine at this time, like how it could be a more profound experience, like from an energy, like fascination level, I have no doubt that, that it will be, and that this is going to turn into one of the more, uh, well-known events globally. And then for Brad and DAI specifically, you know, they've been making videos twice a day, every day for years. And if you've not done that, I'm not sure you understand like how hard that is to do. Like I kind of make videos when I feel like it because that was just my choice, but they have made the decision to show up for everyone in the community, like every day, twice a day. That's a lot. And for them to kind of get to experience this event after all of these years of being criticized for being like conspiracy theorists and, and shelling hopium and telling people, talking about things like XRP being a world reserve currency and being criticized that they couldn't necessarily like prove that. Do you think that Ripple would have sent the CEO and CTO of their company to this event to be prominent participants if all that stuff was conspiracy theories, 
I don't think so. Ripple's very careful about their image. They're very thoughtful about the types of things they participate in. And so this was an incredible validation for, in my opinion, for both DA and Brad and others of us who talked about the same topics, but they've just been doing it for a very long time that, you know, they're right. All the stuff they've been talking about, including the Eastgate stuff, Ripple obviously knows a lot about what's really going on. And they, because of the lawsuit, been in very limited in what they can discuss publicly for obvious reasons, but they wouldn't. They wouldn't participate in this event if Brad and DAI and the rest of us were off the mark. So I just love for the two of them specifically how validating that is after years and years of being criticized to have that kind of come full circle. This is one of the reasons why I'm actually pretty optimistic that this sort of long, arduous road that maybe feels like we have, you know, have been walking this sort of long red pill road where you're kind of waking up to a lot of this corruption in the world. And while you're, uh, you know, discouraged that, you know, we've been learning about these changes and they seem to not be happening. This is why I'm getting more and more optimistic that we're close. Like a lot of loops are getting closed. The validation of many of these theories is here now by the fact that Ripple has been present, you know, you know participating in this particular event. The energy at this event just felt like we are celebrating and it might not look like all of those rewards or things that we're manifesting have materialized in this world. But if you understand anything about energy and how manifestation works, like first you have this idea, then you put it out there, then you start to act like it's already happened. And then these things kind of show up in the real world. And as I said in the beginning of this video, this example of this event itself as a manifestation to me just shows you how that works. And all these other bigger things about this more abundant world, the end of the corruption, you know, is coming as well. Uh, it was also very amazing to see John Deaton speak in person. I actually got to see him a couple of times because I went to different events that he was at, including, you know, the main event. And I will admit something. When John Deaton first announced that he was running, I was kind of worried that it's, you know, too little too late and that we have this government system that is so corrupt it, to me, it's like a house that's infested with termites. And that even if you have one good person come along, it's kind of like painting a house that's infested with termites. And so I, I kind of didn't know if it was going to really do anything. My tune has changed a lot, namely because he is such a powerful presence. And to hear him speak and tell his story, again, it's one thing to hear it online. I'm just if you have the opportunity to be around you know, him or others like in person, you know that it's just different when you're right there in the room. And he made me cry a couple of times. He's a very, very moving speaker talking about his story and this passion that he has for weeding out these swamp rats like Elizabeth Warren. It's very, very inspiring. And I, I changed my tune because I realized, you know, if if nobody's going to stand up and do the right thing and nobody's going to go and fight for change, then, then nothing will ever change. And while I do think that pretty much every career politician is compromised, otherwise they, they kick you out. If we just resign and don't have a, make an effort to fix it, then we don't really deserve a better world. Because if we're not willing to make an effort to put on events where people are gonna get together and share ideas or run for office or you know put out content that, is trying to educate people about the truth. If we're not all kind of figuring out what is our role to play in this, then we're never gonna manifest a better world. We're never gonna wake up in this place where the, the, the field is level and you know the corruption is gone and we're not being lied to and poisoned and all these sort of gross things that have been happening. So it's true that we have to be the change. And if you're a believer in the thesis that I happen to believe in that we're in this sort of four year pause, and where things are supposed to suck and they're supposed to be hard, one of the products of that hard time is it makes you frustrated and you're kind of like, fuck it. If no one else is going to do it, I'm going to step up and do it. And that's kind of what I see John Deaton has done is, you know, he knows he has this powerful set of skills and his commitment to white weeding out this corruption. It just fires him up. You can just tell that when you see him speak. And also it's very clear that he's, very moved by the love from the XRP army uh, and to watch kind of people wait in line to speak with him. And 
it, it was it was powerful to see that. And I absolutely respect the fact that, you know, he's kind of dropping everything to go and be part of the solution. And all of us, you know, we're not all going to run for, for government office because that's not necessarily the skill set of everybody, but you can find your way to contribute and be a part of this better world because that is one of the key things about manifesting. And it's funny because I got, I've got some, some criticism recently that I've been talking about more esoteric kind of timeline type things lately. And people in the comments sometimes say, I wish you would just talk about XRP and, and the financial system. They're the same thing. Like I'm not talking about two different topics. I'm just covering different facets of it. If you want to wake up in a world where things are abundantly plentiful and opportunity is everywhere and there's no more of this massive wealth divide and the wars, the made up wars end, you have to envision what that world looks like and then take the necessary action steps to do that. And it was very cool to see John Deaton show all of us that he's willing to take action and do challenging, expensive, you know, time consuming and draining things to manifest this better reality for all of us. And I'm now, you know, I'm thinking about my own things and how can I do more to bring in this new world? And I'd like to challenge all of you to find the way that you can be a part of, you know, manifesting in this better world. And one really powerful thing you can do is go to events like this one, where the energy is so infectious that you come home like fired up and mobilized and like, I'm going to go and be a part of the solution in the way that I think is best. So thank you so much for everyone who participated. You know, I explained that it was a very moving weekend for me and one that I will remember for a very long time. It was a whirlwind. Uh, I kind of felt like a deer in headlights at many moments. For those of you who took the time to thank me and, and connect with me and appreciate, send your appreciation, you have no idea how much that meant. And I'm going to carry that with me for a very long time. Uh, I know I haven't been making as many videos and many of you asked me to be more regular about that. And I, I understand now why that's important. And I will, will be more consistent about doing that. So, all right, that's my recap. It was fun. I had a blast. I met so many incredible people. And I want to thank Brad and Danielle for you know, putting in an incredible amount of time and effort to, to have that, uh, to, to basically throw a crazy, big, fancy party for all of us. Uh, and I will hopefully see as many of you as possible next year at XRP Las Vegas 2025.